Lastly, I would say to suffer persecution is this. It makes it easier for those who follow in our steps. With the things that I've gone through, I can teach my children. I've been through that. I went through something like that. And it allows me to share that with them. When they were taking water to the west, they built a place called the Boulder Dam. I don't know if any of you have ever seen it. But when they built it, they put on the side of it, these men died so that the desert might rejoice and blossom like a rose. Persecution makes us better. It makes us stronger if we let it, if it doesn't break us. Lastly, we don't suffer alone. You and I are in this together. We're a family here. And when we're struggling, we struggle together. When we rejoice, we rejoice together. So is persecution inevitable? I would say yes. And here's why. When the church is really being the church, like the Bible intends, we should be kind of like the conscience of the culture. The culture shouldn't be influencing us as much as we should be influencing them. And there should always be these little pockets of people that the way we live serves to remind them of a higher way. So it's not the duty for you and I to walk around and be the Jiminy Cricket Holy Spirit who condemns everybody, but it should be our every action should be a statement of God's goodness to people. The way that we interact at the restaurant, the way that we act at work or at Walmart or while we're waiting in line somewhere, it matters because people are watching Sherry and I were at Kings Island. I don't know if you've ever been there. Kings Island is a really cool amusement park in Cincinnati. We were waiting in line for a ride. And we were in line for like ever and a day. You know how it is. And I'm going back and forth. And we get almost up to the front. And there was this group of girls that stopped me and said, Hey, your name's Tom. I said, Yeah, it is. And I said, How do you know? And they said, You spoke at our school in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. And I said, Oh, yeah, I remember that. And I was talking about it. He said, It hadn't been that long ago. I said, Oh, yeah, I remember that. And I said, you've been trying to figure out who I am all this time? And they said, no, no, we, we knew who you were a long time ago. And she said, we've been watching you to see if you really do treat your wife like you said. That's pretty strong. People are watching. And it matters how we interact and act with people. You and I probably won't face death because of our faith. Maybe we'll get made fun of and people will call us names. But I want you to hear this. Christ is not looking for people who will die for him today. He's looking for people who want to live for him today. <coughs> and they're hard to find. That there are days that I choose to live for Christ. There are days I choose to live for me. Sometimes it's moment by moment. Sometimes I get in a rut thinking I'm living for him, but I'm really living for me. Maybe that's you too. I don't know. Happy is the man or one who finds opposition. No way. Happy when I find opposition in everyday life. These situations will offer opportunities to live out your faith, to demonstrate your trust, exercise your grace, and express your love to people how God loves. Oh, come on. Wouldn't it just be easier just to ask us to do those things instead of having all the bad stuff? But the fact is the bad stuff is what gives us the opportunities, what gives us the platform. I, I was having um, a breakfast this week with Derek. Some of you know Derek Mowell. Um, Derek is, is facing some physical struggles. But one of the things he said was, he says, now people listen to me when I tell them about my life. When life's good, nobody cares. But man, when life's bad and you still have an attitude of gratitude, that's when people listen. And so our struggles give us an opportunity to share. The mountain's view is very different than our, our very own. And um, I, I had five or six of you that emailed me this week, and I want to just comment on this. You, one of, you said things like, Really appreciated your perspective on the Beatitudes. Really appreciated your interpretation of the Beatitudes. Really appreciate. I'm not interpreting anything. I'm telling you what the words mean. This is heaven's perspective. I'm not saying God reached down and emailed me or phone called me and told me what to say. What I'm saying is the language and what Christ said is saying to us, it's a good thing to be poor in spirit. It's a good thing to hunger after righteousness. It's a good thing to show mercy. It's a good thing to all those things. This is heaven's perspective. You and I aren't going to get there by ourselves, but we can get there together. His viewpoint is that it is a good thing to be hungry and thirsty. It's a good thing to show mercy. It's a good thing to have a pure heart. And it's a good thing when life gives us opportunities to share about Christ. I don't want that. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want the whole list. You can take the whole list and throw it out because I don't want it. 
You know why? Because I'm a human being. And I'd much rather live my own life. I'm not saying I don't want it. What I'm saying is this goes against everything that makes sense. And nothing in the faith does make sense, quite honestly. But to just measure up to these few things, oh, you've got to be kidding. The Bible tells me a little bit later, I can do some things. Oh, I can do most things. I can do all things. How? So what that means is Christ, through the presence of the Holy Spirit, can do all things through me. It's not about me doing it. It's me through Christ, through Christ's power, through Christ's presence, I can start to measure up to the list. And I want to tell you why this is important. we got all these people that live about 100 yards right there. It's about a three-quarter sandwich from here. I'm telling you. I had kids on the other day. Those people need us to be these people. Those people need us to be the people who live out the Beatitudes. The children whose parents and children come to the academy, they need us to be this way. You need each other to be this way. I need you to be this way. I need to be this way for you. Not because it's my idea, but because it works. And this, if God could lay down and say, hey, here's a road map. Y'all just follow this. Love people, connect people, 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 God. And you guys do these eight things. We'd be fine. We'd also be very busy. But this goes so against our nature. So against our nature. But it's only through Christ that we can measure up to these things. I want you to close your eyes just a second. I just want you to think about the words we sang earlier. Oh, I want more of you. Living water rain down on me. Oh, I need more of you. Living breath of life, come and fill me up. We are hungry. We are hungry. We are hungry for more of you. We are thirsty. Oh, Jesus. We are thirsty for more of you. Father, that's our prayer today. Our prayer is that we can become people who don't just want some righteousness, that don't want some holiness, but that we want all of it. That we could... We could be the people molded in, into the character and nature of Christ because we have so many people who are counting on us. In Christ's name, amen. Here's what I'd like for you to do. If, um, if some of this kind of struck a nerve with you, just, just shoot me an email, all right? We can carry on through the, through the internet or maybe we can have lunch, have a cup of coffee and talk and wrestle through some of this stuff. Um, this, is, this is big stuff. This, this is not, um, I'm not serving soup. You know, this is meat and potatoes, contrary to what Karen would want us to eat from yesterday. But it's meat and potatoes. Okay, this is not sissy. It's not sissy stuff. This is the real deal. Uh, by the way, yesterday uh, we had, what, 15, 16 people at the seminar, which was really cool. And uh, we're going to be doing, putting some materials together to, to take Karen's concept and to put it into a small group. And Helen, especially, thank you so much for all of what you did yesterday, coordinating and, and cooking and whatnot. And... Uh, very excited about the, the, the turnout that we had yesterday. Um, most of you uh, heard this week that uh, Rodney has uh, resigned as our youth director, and I'd like to give Rodney an opportunity to come and share a little bit of what's on his heart. And